Thank you. All right. Um, so, as Per already hinted to, um, I'm going to talk about um, something that is related to uh, gaming, or rather the things we game with, that is gamepads. Because also on devices that only have gamepads as input, we have to enter text passwords. And the situation that really motivated this is something like this. Um, minus the kitten, usually, where you sit on a couch, um, you have someone invited over, and you have to enter a password. And of course, you will have to use um, an on-screen keyboard. And it was actually found that most people will do this. Um, in a survey, 91% said they would enter their password in such a shared space scenario. And so we kind of felt there had to be something better. And when we looked at the literature, we saw that actually not really much had been done um, in this area. And so we decided to start, the, um, start in this area and do the first investigation of text password entry using gamepads. And we did four steps um, for this. So first, we looked at what are actually the requirements for authentication, text password entry, in um, the gamepad context. Then, using these requirements, we assessed a set of authentication schemes. And then, based on the results of this assessment, we thought it might be a good idea to actually look and design something ourselves. And then we did a formal evaluation of three different schemes. I will now go over each of these steps, um, but in these first two steps, I will be pretty brief um, due to the time um, and be more uh, in detail for the other two. So we started out um, with the requirements. We identified six overall, um, some security requirements, technical requirements, and usability requirements. Um, and then we applied these to a set um, that we found to be re representative of um, authentication schemes. That is, on the one hand, schemes that are already deployed in the gamepad context, and on the other hand, schemes that were proposed in the literature as being shoulder surfing, resist shoulder surfing resistant, but not necessarily for the gamepad context. Um, we also wanted to cover um, all techniques. Unfortunately, due to the already deployed system, also none, but um, all the techniques that can be used to actually um, prevent opportunistic shoulder surfing. And upon applying these, um, we found that actually only four of these schemes fulfilled all these uh, six requirements. And only one of these, this is the one here at the bottom, the grid-based scheme, actually seemed feasible to adapt to the gamepad context. And so from this um, assessment, we had two schemes of interest. First, the on-screen keyboard, which is the incumbent, the de facto standard used everywhere, and having a baseline for that um, is simply important. Then. From the literature, we had the grid-based scheme. And since I assume that not everybody is completely familiar with uh, this scheme, here's how it works. As the name suggests, um, you have this grid. And each column in this grid actually represents one character in the password. And each of these columns is basically a big wheel with all the characters that could uh, be for that character on them. And they are in a random distribution on these um, columns. And the user simply has to scroll in view, that is, into one of these gray cells, the character that is part of the password. And the trick here is that the password does not have to be on one of the rows. So it does not have to be aligned. And that is um, how the shoulder surfing resistance, at least to opportunistic um, observers, comes into the scheme. But the scheme not really, it only needs directional input. So it's easy to do this, even on a gamepad. You have these two joysticks on most of these gamepads, and you can simply do it. But it does not really harness um, these controls to the full extent. And so we thought um, it might be good to have a comparable scheme that is tailored directly to the context using the same technique, that is, um, input that uses not only one character, but um, a distractor characters as well um, to have a better comparison. Um, and what we then did is we designed our own. And this is how it basically looks like. This is color wheels. Um, like the grid-based scheme, it uses um, obfuscation of input. And its design is based on pie menu structures, which have been proven to be 
much better controls um, for use with joysticks. These pies, um, pie menus are basically these flowers where they have eight petals each, and on each of these petals there are characters, and all these characters are randomly distributed. So how do we enter a password here? Well, we start out with this random placement of characters on all the petals, and then you just have to look in the random placement where the character is you want to enter. Then you press a button on the gamepad, and all the characters vanish, and hopefully you still re remember um, which of the petals the character was on, because now the analog stick controls are actually activated, and you can select the respective petal, um, and you can see on the right flower here um, that it, the uppermost green leaf turned a little lighter. That is the feedback for the user. Then the user confirms this selection, and a new random distribution of characters appears on the petals, and this has to be repeated to enter the whole password. All right, um, and so we have these three schemes, and we wanted to find out how all this actually works in terms of um, first the shoulder surfing resistance, but also the usability of the systems. And so we conducted a formal evaluation. And if you do this type um, of user study, you usually can either do an online study, which allows having a much wider sample. Um, you do not have to recruit locally. So there will be um, a more diverse set of people in your sample. But on the other hand, a lab study would allow for usability testing. And so we, in the end, decided to simply do both, um, an online study and a lab study. We had a between subject design, which is we had three groups, each used one of the schemes or had to attack one of the schemes. And then we compared these um, groups against each other. How was the procedure in the um, study? We had first introduction and informed consent, then people had the, uh, the opportunity to familiarize themselves with the schemes. And then came in the lab study, the usability assessment. We had this explicitly before the shoulder surfing um, part in order not to influence the satisfaction um, metric um, by having uh, the impression of the shoulder surfing resistance as well. And then the shoulder surfing part came, and finally some demographics and the debriefing. For the usability assessment, people actually had to just enter three random passwords, and we measured the timings, the success rates, and the system usability scale as measure of satisfaction. And for the shoulder surfing scheme, we produced 10 videos where the same password was entered um, for each of these schemes. These were recordings of one single expert user in, not, in order not to have too much variance. But um, since we did not want to use the same video, we introduced some slight variants. For example, the videos for the text password, uh, for the uh, on-screen keyboard, um, use different paths and the speeds in the interaction. For the lab study, we had 78 participants. And we recruited locally with flyers, mailing lists, social media. And we also had a sign-up questionnaire because due to the usability stuff, um, we wanted to have an equal distribution of people uh, and their experience with gamepads um, among the groups. And for the online study, we all originally started out with the same amount of people, but um, we used a panel, and, these, uh, and so this was an online study. People um, tempered with the environment they were supposed to shoulder surf in. So we had some safeguards that they could not rewind the videos that they saw, and we had uh, pretty blunt evidence that people uh, tempered with this, and so we had to exclude these people. So what did we find? Um, well, for the online study, 12 of 19 people uh, found the pa uh, could observe the password successfully. With the on-screen keyboard for the grid-based scheme, it was only two of 19, and nobody for the color wheel scheme. In the lab study, uh, oh, in, uh, and the differences were significant for um, the on-screen keyboard to the other two schemes, but not between the um, grid-based scheme and the color wheel scheme. For the lab study, actually, most uh, people found the password um, for the on-screen keyboard, and um, almost half for the grid-based scheme, but again, nobody for the color wheel scheme. And here, the differences um, are all significant. And 
This, of course, begs the question, why is there a difference between these two studies? And we believe that this is due to a slightly different attacker model. Um, in the lab study, people actually asked us um, to stop the shoulder surfing task because they were so frustrated with trying to shoulder surf the color wheel scheme. And therefore, this is more a measure of perception. Um, this is the perceived security, which to some extent is realistic in this scenario because if the person sitting next to me and they did not plan to sit here weren't I, uh, while I uh, enter my password, um, this might be a realistic setting to have this perceived security. But it is a different sentiment. In terms of usability, um, for the effectiveness, the uh, on-screen keyboard was the uh, most uh, successful um, scheme where most people had three successful authentication attempts and color wheels actually performed the worst. The only, and this is also the only significant difference um, with respect to effectiveness. For the efficiency, um, we see a slightly different picture where, again, the on-screen keyboard is best, but the grid space uh, the grid-based scheme um, is worst, and color wheels is somewhere in between. Um, all differences here are significant, and the same for satisfaction. Again, the on-screen keyboard is best, and um, the grid-based scheme is worst. And so when we look at this, we see a, uh, a, a clear trade-off between the security um, and the uh, usability parts of this study, where the on-screen keyboard fares worst in terms of, uh, in terms of shoulder surfing resistance, and color wheel seems to be the most robust scheme. But this is somewhat inverse in the usability where the on-screen key keyboard is uh, still the best. Um, and color wheels, while more efficient than uh, the, uh, while uh, better than the grid-based scheme, um, our use uh, is significantly worse than the on-screen keyboard. So the question is, are users willing to make this trade-off? And we asked people, um, whether they would like to continue using this scheme after the study. And what we can see is that um, the color wheel scheme scored significantly better than um, the other two schemes in this regard. So people seem to be aware of this trade-off, and they seem to be willing to actually make this trade-off. All right, so what are the takeaways then? Um, well, the on-screen keyboard is highly susceptible to opportunistic shoulder, sur shoulder surfing. Um, it usually takes more than one um, attempt to find it, but most people will get there in the end if they sit live next to you on the couch. Um, and this is somewhat um, unsurprising because this is a normal text password entry, a uh, normal text entry scheme, um, not designed for passwords. It gives explicit feedback. The attacker gets the feedback as well. And so um, a separate entry method is needed for secrets. Also, the existing shoulder surfing resistant authentication schemes are not straightforward to be adapted to the gamepad context. Um, many do not need, uh, meet the requirements of the gamepad context in the first place, and an adaptation of some that uh, do um, is quite involved to actually find a way to exploit the available co controls. And so we feel that Color Wheels is a first step um, towards a truly deployable scheme. Um, it is most robust in terms of shoulder surfing resistance. It still needs some improvements um, in terms of font, for example, and um, other usability um, issues in general. But um, we, most importantly, we have seen that people are willing to make this trade-off in this context, where they probably do not have to enter their password as often as when they log in on the PC. So um, they are willing to spend some more time and um, appreciate the addi additional shoulder surfing resistance. Um, just three limitations I quickly want to mention. The first one I already um, mentioned before. The videos ran in the online study in an uncontrolled environment, and we did not expect um, this amount of tampering with the um, survey environment, where people um, really went into code and changed uh, stuff to go through the um, survey quicker. You didn't anticipate hackers. Not in a click worker panel, no. <laughs> um, then we uh, chose the password at random, so people would this is probably not how people would usually choose their password, but for the study it makes sense to not have in the um, grid-based scheme 
a normal word run from one um, end to the other because we felt that this would favor the other two schemes. And likewise, for the on-screen keyboard, we wanted that the layout had to be changed to capital letters and uh, to symbols. And last but not least, um, the participants found color wheels really frustrating to use and just asked them to stop guessing, um, which we also did not anticipate, but um, we think that this is a, a sentiment that an actual opportunistic shoulder surfer might then have. All right, and that's basically it. If you have any questions, please.